Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Bro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a first perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have another interesting episode for you guys that you want to stick around for. I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot to say about this one. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video if you haven't already. Anyway, so it seems as if everyone uh, is making their top 10 NBA player uh, rankings, right? Everyone is doing it, right? We even did ours, I believe it was yesterday, the day before yesterday. And the one thing you know that you can uh, tell from all of these different lists that people are putting out there is that people are taking exception with everyone's. There's no perfect list. Even Skip ba- <laughs> Skip Bayless did his list yesterday, and I was totally floored by it. We even put it up on the channel uh, just to see what people thought about it, and I was cracking up because his list was just, I mean, obviously, you know, he's going to put Michael Jordan first and all of that, but then he ended up ranking, I think. He ranked LeBron, if I'm not mistaken, number nine or number 10th on his list. But I think one of the worst lists that was put out there uh, was ESPN. Now, ESPN is notorious for putting out terrible basketball rankings. No one is surprised by this. I think it was one of the reasons Kobe Bryant said with his own words, right? I think at one point he ranked him the 25th best player in the NBA. He said, you know, there's just a bunch of idiots working over there. That's what Kobe Bryant said. Not not, Not what I said is what he said, and I'm just repeating what he said. So... ESPN is they're, they're known for putting out these kind of you know quirky lists. There there even a time there were even times in the past when Stephen A. Smith you know during his early days on ESPN first take with uh, uh, Skip Bayless, and they used to put out all of these rankings. And he, even him, he would come out and say, "I'm ashamed at these lists that they're putting." Out. Who are the people that are working with the, that are creating these lists? He's even said, "I don't even want to be associated with the people that make these lists. This is embarrassing." So ESPN has a history of putting out, and I think they do a lot of this uh, to kind of create conversation, uh, you know, create conversations, and you know, hype and all the sensationalism. I don't think they really believe that these lists that they put out are really good, and I think their current list is just a latest example of them making these kind of terrible lists. So let's go through their list quickly. So here's ESPN's top 10 NBA players of all time, according to them. <clears throat> Michael Jordan, they have Michael Jordan at number one. They have LeBron James at number two. They have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at number three. They have Magic Johnson at number four. Will Chamberlain comes in at the number five spot. Then, of course, they have Bill Russell at number six. Larry Bird at number seven. Uh, Tim Duncan at number eight. Oscar Robinson at number nine. And then they have to, to Kobe Bryant at number 10 to round off their list. Now, there's a few things that I didn't understand about their list. When I went to their website and I was looking at them ranking these players, they just gave a quick paragraph about the person. And then they just listed kind of their averages, right? I was like, okay, so we're using we're using their career averages to rank these guys. That part remained a bit unclear to me. So I didn't understand that. But firstly, let me just start off with this. The first thing I want to say is I don't know how they found a way to rank LeBron higher than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, why would be... Why, why would LeBron be ranked higher than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Please help me understand. Like, if you compare their resumes, why are you ranking LeBron higher than Kareem? I, I don't understand that. Like, why? How did that happen? Number one. Now, I can see LeBron fans arguing that he should be ranked higher than Kobe Bryant because that argument takes place all the time, especially on our channel. That I can see. I can, I can see there being an argument there, but I don't see how you can rank uh, him ahead of, ahead of Kareem. That's just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's absurd. Like, why would you rank him? Like, have you seen... A lot of these people that make these, do you guys even look at these guys' resumes before you even make your point? Like, have you seen Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's resume? Have y'all looked at his resume? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is in a class of his own, him and Michael Jordan. Like, there's no way you would rank, in my personal opinion, there's no way that you should be ranked higher than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Obviously, Skip Bayless ranked him higher, uh, ranked Magic Johnson higher than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because I think he felt, uh, ranked Magic, yeah, Magic Johnson higher because I feel like he felt that um, he was pivotal in a lot of those championships that he won in L.A. But to me, I just don't see how you'd rank LeBron higher than him. So that's the first part. The second part about the list that makes absolutely no sense to me is the part where they ranked Oscar Robinson higher than Kobe. How did that, like, okay, first of all, let's look at, um, first of all, let's look at Oscar Robinson's career. Okay, it's not a disrespect to Oscar Robinson. Let's look at his career. He uh, he won an NBA championship in 1971. He won a regular season MVP. He's a 12-time All-Star. Three-time All-Star Game MVP. He's made nine All-First NBA teams, two seconds. So he's made 11 All-NBA teams. He's made an uh, NBA rookie team. Uh, he was an NBA rookie of the year, and he won, He had, uh, what is it? He led the league in assists uh, six times, right? So, and I think it was, he, he was the first player to average a triple-double. Cool. That's fantastic. Kobe Bryant, on the other hand, is a five-time NBA champion, two-time finals MVP, regular season MVP, 18-time All-Star, four-time All-Star Game MVP. He's been on 11 all-first NBA teams, two second, two thirds. He's been on 15 all-NBA teams, nine all-first defensive teams, uh, three second defensive teams. So he's been on 12 all-NBA defensive teams, two-time scoring champion. 
had the second highest scoring game in NBA history. How do you rank Oscar Robinson high, ahead of uh, Kobe Bryant? I don't understand. Now, if you're saying, well, Oscar Robinson averaged a triple double, okay, great, but that's like, I mean, uh, he won a tri- he averaged a triple double and won an NBA championship. So that's like saying, okay, if Russell Westbrook wins an NBA championship, you would rank Russell Westbrook ahead of Kobe Bryant? That's absurd. I don't even think Oscar Robinson should be in the top 10, if you ask me. And secondly, how did Oscar Robinson get ranked ahead of Ke- uh, Kevin Durant all time? How did that happen? Okay, let's, let's, you, I just read off. Oscar Robinson's um, NBA resume. Let's look at Kevin Durant for a second. Kevin Durant is a two-time NBA champion. He has more championships than Oscar Robinson. He's a two-time finals MVP. He has more finals MVPs than him. He's a 12-time All-Star. I think about the same. He's a two-time All-Star game MVP. He's made nine All-NBA teams. He led the league in scoring four times, and he's been a part of the 50-40-90 club. How does he get ranked ahead of Kevin Durant? Excuse me, like how? So that was one of the things about their list. And I'm just scratching my head. I'm like, okay, did they just look for anybody to throw in the top 10 and say, okay, we're going to rank this guy ahead of Kobe. Let's just think of anybody. Like that was a bad selection in my opinion. I don't know why they put him up there. And I don't think Oscar Robinson all time should be ranked higher than Kevin Durant. I'm sorry. He shouldn't be. Feel any type of way you want to feel, but I don't agree with that. Now, let me give you guys our top 10 list, which people also took exception with. People are, people don't agree anyway, right? But here's our top 10 list. So we have Michael Jordan at number one, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at number two. I have Kobe Bryant at number three, LeBron James at number four, Shaq at number five, Magic Johnson at number six, Tim Duncan at number seven, Larry Bird at number eight, Bill Russell at number nine, and Hakeem Olajuwon at number 10. Now, <clears throat> I, would de- I, I, I would not rank LeBron ahead of Kobe Bryant. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't rank him ahead of Kobe. I wouldn't rank, rank him ahead of Kareem for damn sure. And obviously, I'm not going to rank him ahead of Michael Jordan unless I'm a freaking dweeb, right? Why would I rank uh, LeBron James ahead of Michael Jordan? For this simple reason. LeBron has had the most help of any of any NBA all-star, and of any NBA player, superstar in the history of the NBA. He has had the most help and won the least with the most help. I can't rank you ahead of these guys because you had more help. And you were yet you yet somehow found a way to get to win less than those guys ahead of you. Kobe Bryant beat three top 75 players by himself in the NBA Finals. Three. Last time I checked, Andrew Bynum was not a top 75 player. Paul Gasol was not a top 75 player. Paul Gasol will go into the Hall of Fame, but he's not a top 75 player. Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, thing. LeBron's claim to GOAT status is that he beat Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green in the NBA Finals. He beat Stephen Curry... Uh, Clay Thompson and uh, Draymond Green in the NBA Finals. Like, help me understand. Stephen Curry is amazing. Clay Thompson is amazing. Draymond Green is amazing. But are you telling me that that duo was tougher to beat than Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce? Are you freaking kidding me? Those are three top 75 NBA players of all time. Are you saying that the only reason because they didn't focus on winning the best record in the NBA? They won 60 plus games that year. What are you? What are we talking about? So what are we talking about? That's like saying, okay. The Golden State Warriors were a better team than the 72 Chicago Bulls because they won one more game, but the, those Chicago Bulls are never defeated in the NBA Finals. How do y'all make that argument? I mean, you are just looking out of a regular season rank. So there, there's been so many great teams in the regular season. They never won NBA championships. And there have been teams, there have been, there have been San Antonio Spurs teams that have won championships on the road. Like, what are we talking about here? That's the claim to fame that you beat Draymond Green, Stephen Curry, and Klay Thompson. Meanwhile, Kobe beat Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce, who are top three. Top, I'm sorry. I'm not ranking LeBron ahead of Kobe Bryant for that. doesn't make any freaking sense, number one. Number two, Kobe Bryant only lost twice in the NBA Finals. He's been there seven. He only lost twice. Okay, LeBron has lost six times in the NBA Finals. Are you kidding me? LeBron has been swept twice in the NBA Finals. Are you freaking kidding me? Swept. How can a GOAT be swept in the NBA Finals? How do you put this guy in the top two? Above Kobe Bryant, I don't get it. What are we what are we discussing here? So to me, it, it, for clearly these people are not focused on winning. That's for damn sure. It doesn't seem that, that they're putting a premium over him. And I would rank Kobe Bryant ahead of Tim Duncan because Kobe Bryant played in, I mean, Tim Duncan played with less uh in a less turbulent um environment. Greg Popovich was, you know, clearly ran that ship. So for me, I think Kobe Bryant with all of the headaches that he had to face and the fact that he won that championship against the Boston Celtics big three by himself and he beat three top 75 players, I think that carries a lot of freaking weight. If you guys are going to be walking around and making it seem like the championship that they beat when uh, LeBron beat the, 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 these guys in, 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 what is it, in the 2016 uh, NBA Finals, uh, you're going to be walking around with it like an anvil around your neck. Then what does Kobe, what, what does that feat say to me? Some people say he was wrong, but Kobe faced more talent. He clearly did. 
Kobe Bryant faced the most 50 plus win teams, like more than more than most of these guys. So to me, I wouldn't rank him ahead of him. And another reason why I wouldn't, I don't understand why LeBron is ranked so high is because LeBron has played with so many top 75 players. Think about this. LeBron has played with Ray Allen, Anthony Davis, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Russell Westbrook. Kobe Bryant played with Shaq. Name the other top 75 player that Kobe Bryant played with. Now he had Shaq for those three years, but he went on to win two other championships as the only top 75 player on his team. So to me, I take some exceptions with their list. The major ones are, number one, I don't understand how LeBron is ranked higher than Kareem and Kobe. That's number one. Number two, I don't understand how how Oscar Robinson is ranked higher than Kobe Bryant and how he's even ranked higher than Kevin Durant. Those are my two major takeaways. I don't think those things make any sense whatsoever.